the employees essentially own the business and it was heralded by Nick Clegg a couple of months ago as being the way to boost our economy. So how common are cooperatives at the moment? Well, we already have over 5,000 cooperative businesses in Britain with over 12.8 million members taking a stake in the businesses that they work for. Well, the UK Trade Association for Cooperatives says that sharing is at the heart of the model. That's the core principle. I mean, the great thing about the John Lewis announcement today is that it's giving bonuses a good name, that actually it's sharing the profits. And that's the core to the cooperative model, whether it's owned by the workers or, or some by customers, you know, as well. It's about taking those profits and sharing them around with everybody. So does it work well for everyone? Well, with me now is Mark Littlewood, Director General of the Institute of Economic Affairs. Good morning Good to morning. you. Good morning. Clearly works for John Lewis. Does it work for every firm? It can't work for every firm. And John Lewis is always held up as this great model. And it is a great company. But it's a unique company. It was in 1920 when the owner died, he decided to bequeath it as a gift to all of the workers in it. That's a sort of once in a millennia event. That's not going to happen very much. I mean, if you were to take, say, Tesco, a major company as an example, it would cost each employee about £50,000 each if they actually wanted to buy out Tesco and run it as a cooperative. That's probably quite a stretch for most uh, Tesco employees' um, uh, general pay packet. So it can work, but there are problems, there are dangers. We shouldn't look at this, I think, as the solution to all of our economic mm. ills. So it would clearly be difficult for a big existing company to suddenly change into that. What if you're starting up a business and you're, you're thinking of this as an option? Yeah, I think that there are some benefits to that. It, when the obvious benefit, as we saw in your clip, is that it does potentially give workers a real stake in the business, that they don't just see themselves as sort of nine to five workers who get their paycheck. They have a real stake in the success. But there are problems with that as well. We have seen in some companies that sometimes actually makes it a bit harder to hold the management to account. I mean, Equitable Life was mm. a mutual, for example. And I think perhaps if that had been demutualised, if it had been owned by shareholders, whose only real job was to keep a BDI on the board and make sure that short-term profits weren't being run for, then perhaps we wouldn't have seen that terrible collapse in Equitable Life. So it's horses for courses. It's part of the mix. But I don't think we're likely to move to an all-out John Lewis economy. And if, I think if we did, that wouldn't be a solution to all of our economic problems. Are we likely to see more of the cooperatives? Because we have seen, for example, some pubs which have been taken over by people in the area which also have a stake in it. It seems to be growing more. I think it is growing more, but at quite a micro level. Uh, I mean, the government's gone a bit quiet on its whole big society idea. But for, if you like, small social sort of enterprises, taking over your local pub with four or five people, it's quite an attractive model. But big business, huge companies are still a vital part of our economy. And to try and mutualise those is well beyond the ability of Nick Clegg, the government, or anyone else, frankly. A challenge for them. OK, thank you very much this morning for that, Mark. And that's it for me for now.